why unit test, or rather, why you should really care about unit testing in the first place. If you're building an application, you want that application to be uh, error error proof. You know, you don't want to have it riddled with bugs and regret or what are known as regressions. So you want to prevent runtime errors. So a runtime error is basically an error that's introduced not while you're actually coding. So when you code and you're missing a semicolon, or if you, you know, have the wrong method signature, or you pass the wrong parameters, the compiler is kind enough to tell you like, hey, there was a problem, you need to fix this because this is a syntactical issue. But a runtime error happens when you've actually built your app and provided it to the user, and now the user is using your app and it crashes, and you have no idea what's going on. Or sometimes you do based on the logs, but it's better if you can prevent those things from happening. So to give you an example, let's say you're downloading data from the internet. That's what your application is doing. And it's, it's responsible to parse uh, date strings. So it can parse the date and create date objects from it. And let's say in this JSON, you have three, four different types of date strings coming to you. And you didn't really expect that. You, know, you, you thought there was just going to be one uh, string format, and you assume that, and you write uh, code to you know, parse that one string format. But maybe you know, if you were aware enough, you could have prevented this from happening if you tested several different date formats. So that, that's one thing. You could prevent a runtime error. And the next thing is a logic error. So a logical error is a little different from your runtime error. So let's say, for example, you, you're building an app where you're responsible for accessing location data from the user. So in order to do that, you have to get permission from the user to access the location data. Um, so there are several different scenarios here, right? The, the first one and the simple one is that the user gives you permission to their data. No problem. Then your app runs fine. But what if the user decides not to give you permission? They don't trust you. They don't trust your application just yet. So have you covered those two scenarios? If not, like maybe you can write uh, unit testing to you know, test those two different scenarios. The third scenario that could happen is that the user actually doesn't give you permission at first, but once he starts using your application, he really likes it, and then he realizes that he wants to give you location data so he can get the added benefit of providing you with location information. So uh, that's the third scenario where he goes into the settings and then gives your application permissions for the location information. So have you taken into those three scenarios into account? And have you written code that takes in those three scenarios into account? So by unit testing, you can you know, set up test cases for all these three different scenarios and make sure that you have written code that would pass all these three scenarios. And finally, to catch bugs. Or, or also known as regressions. I mean, you can create a bug, and obviously runtime errors and logical errors are bugs. But what happens when you're working in a team scenario where you have several different people that are committing code? And let's say you created a piece of functionality, and someone else, your coworker, comes along, and he adds to that piece of functionality. Do you know if he introduced a bug when he did that? Or he took away something from your functionality? Did that introduce a bug? Uh, also known as regressions, of course. So you can prevent all of these things from happening if you start using unit testing.